We are now moving on to principles of value. Um, this is a list of definitions um, that do affect the value of a property um, and things to consider probably for you as you are doing your comparative market analysis uh, for your sellers and your buyers as well in terms of determining value. Um, but these are some definitions that affect the value of a property. First up, we have anticipation. And this is the idea of something happening or not happening that could affect the value of a property. So for example, you've got a client calls and says, I've heard that the local manufacturing plant in my neighborhood is closing. When's the best time to sell? The answer would be now. <laughs> um, because if you wait to when it actually happens and everyone else has their property for sale, um, because they've maybe got a, they can't afford the mortgage anymore, they don't have a job, or they've got to move to find other employment, um, that's going to affect the value of their home um, based on supply and demand, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Next up is change. Um, real estate changes over time. Um, structures are man-made material, so they are subject to natural disasters. Um, as well as just basic wear and tear. So we all know maybe that pristine home that we saw that we admired as a little kid and we drive by it now and we're like, ooh, what's happened there? Well, over time, if it maybe wasn't properly cared for, it will change. Um, and sometimes it's for the positive and sometimes it's for the negative when it comes to value. Competition. Um, this one does, again, affect supply and demand, um, but it also is what happens when you've got a property listed and the neighbor across the street decides to list their property for $5,000 less than yours, right? It's the idea is we've got to be competitive on the market. You want to look like the best bang for the buck, right? the best value for the dollar. That's just based on simple competition of who can get their property sold first. Conformity. This is the idea that actually a neighborhood that has similar values and styles of home and similar amenities, that is actually beneficial to the neighborhood. When we see a property that is built in a neighborhood that completely sticks out and is so unique, it actually sometimes can lower its value because it's too unique for the property. Now I've given you one to look up if you wanted to at 3524 Stonebridge Road in West Des Moines. And if any of you Googled that, it probably came up on Zillow. Um, it's what I call the dome home. It's basically three upside down swimming pools, um, and it is very unique, and it's very unique for the neighborhood. It was originally built for a home show, and over time, it's had a lot of change to it beyond even just basic wear and tear. It needs, needs some love, probably, in terms of remodeling and basic functional repair of windows, um, things like that. Uh, this is one that has been an un really difficult property over the years to price because there's nothing else like it. There's nothing else like it um, because it doesn't fit into the property and it's very difficult to find comparable sales for. So again, conformity is the idea that actually your safest value is when you fit in with the neighborhood. There's some continuity. Um, next up is contribution which means some improvements increase the value and some improvements don't increase the value and some improvements actually decrease the value of the property. A great example of an increase in value might be updating a kitchen or a roof. Um, a swimming pool in Iowa, typically, I know during COVID, um, actually swimming pools have been very sought after but typically in Iowa, because we can only use the pool such a short amount of time during the year, it doesn't really add that much value. 
And in some cases, I have seen it even decrease the value. Um, the landscaping actually increases the value of the fence and landscaping that goes with a pool. I've seen that increase the value more than the actual swimming pool. Highest and best value. We review this already because it's the first step of the appraisal process. Um, but is this property using for its best intended purpose? Increasing and diminishing returns. Um, this basically says that you can max out the value of a property within a neighborhood. You can over improve it to the point where you're not gonna get a return on your investment, okay? Another way to think of increasing and diminishing uh, returns is if you have buyers with a set budget of $200,000, that's, that's their max budget. They're going to probably make a sliding decision on the scale of size versus condition. So at that $200,000, the more square footage, probably the worst condition it's gonna be in, where the smaller square footage is probably gonna be in the better condition, okay? And that's gonna be up to your buyers to decide what works for them. If they need a lot of space for growing family or in-home business, whatever their buying uh, needs are, they will determine that, but it is kind of a sliding relationship of condition versus size when you've got a set budget. Plottage is the idea that two parcels actually become worth more when they're combined into one. So the example I've got here is, let's say we've got two lots side by side worth $15,000 each. The rule of plottage means if you combine those into one super lot, it's not worth 30,000, it's maybe worth, I've said 40 here, but 50 or 60. It's worth more being combined. And last up, we're gonna talk about this supply and demand. Now, I want you to think what you know about the real estate market right now. What have you been hearing? Um, and I don't know exactly when you're watching this video to know exactly what the market's doing, but if you're talking about sellers getting top value, multiple offers, things selling above list price, that's usually what we call a seller's market, right? Captain Obvious. That means that the demand is high and the supply is low. There are more buyers wanting to purchase than there are properties available. The opposite of that is when we've got a ton of properties available and we don't have as many buyers that wanna purchase. That's a buyer's market because in order to be competitive and attract those buyers when they've got a plethora of options to choose from, your price is going to go down, okay? So that's when supply is high and demand is low. And I want you to think of supply and demand like you would with anything. What's the hot, I don't know, Nintendo, am I dating myself? Uh, forgive me, but what is like the hot thing like that when it comes out? People are outside of Best Buy spending the night with tents and bag chairs, right? This, the demand on that is usually really high. The supply is really low, which means nothing's on sale. Nothing's on sale. There's no Groupon for that. Um, then a few months later, another batch comes out and maybe there aren't as many buyers. And maybe that next holiday, you'll see that maybe there is a sale going on. That's then the effect of supply and demand that has helped then alter the price as well, okay? Here are some factors though that affect supply. Workforce construction and material costs. We saw a lot of that happen in 2020 with the pandemic that caused just a lack of building materials, that demand with such supply caused the price of building materials to go up. I've noted this here in my comment, but I had someone tell me, I don't know if this is true or not, 
that the Lowe's in West Moines, Iowa on 50th Street in May of 2020 sold as much treated lumber, two by four treated lumber, as they normally sell in an entire year. Everyone was home doing projects. So not only did we have people at home doing projects because of a quarantine, but we also had manufacturing plants where we're actually turning trees into two by four lumber that were closed as well during the pandemic. That was kind of a double running thing that really caused building prices to go up. Government controls and monetary policy. This is gonna be how easy is it to get a loan? And what is going on with property taxes and interest rates to borrow the money? And usually uh, the Federal Reserve, we will talk about them during the financing chapter, they really regulate the interest rate to try to outsmart inflation. Um, and anytime we've got kind of a flat, stagnant economy, they'll maybe try to reboost it by lowering the interest rate, getting more buyers attracted and buying real estate. Um, that's an example of a government control or a monetary policy. Now, here's the factors, uh, factors that affect demand. Um, population, what are the demographics of that population? Young, old, um, and I want you to think of demographics, for example, like in a college town like Iowa City or Ames versus maybe a demographic in Altoona, Iowa, right? Where there's not a state college. Um, employment and wage levels is another one. Um, are there local employers that are hiring? Is there a reason um, to want to live there? You're going to be able to have a job to even afford the house. So this is a nice review of all the things, again, that affect the factors and principles when establishing value.